Hi, my name is Nitrogen and Fingers, and I suck at Minecraft. I can't count the number of times that I've died in this game, falling down mine shafts, drowning in lava. Getting lost in the desert. Being shot by skeletons. Man, I suck at this game. When I went back to try and play survival for the first time, it must have taken me over a dozen lives just to scrounge together enough diamonds for a fresh pickaxe. Those are diamonds I couldn't afford to squander. So using turtles from computer craft, I decided to find a way to make my life just a little bit easier. My first big job, of course, was to find more diamonds. So the first thing I did was write a turtle program to dig out new mine shafts for me. They would keep digging until I hit bedrock. Then they would come back up and calculate the number of torches and ladders that would be required to get me down safely before placing them in where they need to go. Of course, the script failed here, so I had to do it myself. I told you I suck at this game. At the bottom, the turtles have dug out three small rooms for me, one on top of the other, near the bottom of the map, which serves as the starting point for my mining. The technique I had been using for mining up until this point was this branching corridor pattern. I create a central passageway, and then I create branches every three blocks, meaning that all the blocks that I mined through had an entire area exposed while I only have to mine about one third of them. So I developed a turtle routine that would follow a similar pattern, digging out one branch at a time and leaving torches every step of the way. When they came across a seam containing something valuable, like iron, redstone, diamonds and so on, it would hollow them out, checking one block at a time to see where they were, before continuing on their way. Once a branch was complete, it would drop its supplies off at the base and keep going. It didn't take long for my turtles, invulnerable to monsters, fatigue and even lengths of lava, to secure many more diamonds, more diamonds that I could use to make more miners. And from that point onwards, I had a shaft of three running at any period of time, plunging into the depth so I didn't have to. The only main problem was that some of the tunnels they dug out were just a little bit too dangerous for me to visit myself. Now while mining had been made much easier, smelting all that ore and having plenty of fresh torches on hand was becoming really burdensome, so I decided to look into using charcoal, another job for my turtles. First, a way to clear out the environment was necessary. I wrote a program to strip dirt from the landscape, and then deposit it into a chest using one of my turtles. I figured the dirt was more useful in my hand than on the ground, and that big open area that I just dug out would be a perfect space for me to put farms in. Now this process can take a little while, so I often had several of these programs running at once. When enough space, or in this case dirt, had been dug out, I would then place a landscaping turtle and take some of the dirt to make out a flat area that would be appropriate for farming. I typically did this over the hole that I had just dug, but in this case I just found an empty patch of land. The field laying turtle digs out blocks that are above it and places dirt blocks below it, making sure the area is nice and flat. It does the perimeter first before filling in the field block by block. Once a nice field had been laid out, I then placed a chest in the far left corner with a logging turtle and some saplings and a reference log. It then laid the saplings in the field dimensions, inspecting them for growth periodically and felling any trees that were ready. Some trees, like pine trees and birch trees, grew nice straight trunks with no branches that could be harvested very quickly, but others like oak, acacia and jungle trees have much more complex layouts. For these, the turtle created a list of nodes in three-dimensional space everywhere that a possible log could be, and would then go through them one by one. This process of felling is much longer, but also very thorough. Farming didn't have to be limited to trees, though. 
I modified my landscaping program to make use of two water-filled buckets. After a field was laid out by my landscaping turtle, it dug a series of trenches and then filled them with water using those two buckets to make the area suitable for crop farming. When a field was complete, I would give the turtle a specific crop and some metadata details to tell them when they're ripe and what the seeds would look like. Crops like wheat and melon had separate seeds that we used for farming that it could gather itself, while carrots, seeds and potatoes carrots, reeds and potatoes, excuse me, just used the crop, so we would just keep a small amount of that on hand for planting. Even with just a small sample of crop, after some patience the turtle would then turn that into a full field and deposit the harvest into the chests. With wood and food now in ample supply, I started looking into automating the smelting process of my resources. To do this, I would give a turtle coordinates for a number of furnaces that I'd laid down, and three input chests. A chest for materials and potential uh, fuel to be placed into as input, a fuel chest that contained charcoal for cooking, and an output chest where the completed product would be put. Whenever a material is found inside that input chest, the turtle would then calculate the necessary amount of fuel required to cook it, and how long the job would take to finish. It then allocates a furnace that's required for this particular job, gets an amount of fuel, and starts cooking. Once the job is done, it then collects the resources and puts them in the output chest, ready for use. However, if it comes across any uh, wooden logs that are smelted in the process, these are then turned into charcoal, which can be deposited directly in the fuel chest to be used later. Of course, after a while, the influx of the materials become unmanageable. I had dozens of chests filled with crops, stone, and dirt, all things I picked up myself and had no way of easily organising. So borrowing an idea from a turtle butler I played with a long time ago, I wrote a program for an archivist turtle. Now this turtle's job was to effectively take the resources that I gave it, no matter what they were, and then put them into chests that were organised and accessible to it. To this end, I developed the script that would store information on every kind of object it had come across, and then put them in this long, ever-growing list of archives. If it ever came across a brand new resource that I hadn't seen before, or it runs out of space in one of its old chests, it would create a brand new chest, add that to the list of chests, and then put those chests directly into the archive. And in one fell swoop, my storage problems were solved. For the first few setups of this that I ran, I still had to ferry my goods from my mines and my farms directly to these archives, but I grew tired of that very quickly. So instead I created a network of minecart tunnels underneath my fields, and these would use hoppers to take goods from the chests and deposit them directly into the archivist chest. I ran turtles from the mines to the surface as well to deliver the mined goods as well, connecting all of my resources together. And with that, after a few days of work and setup, I could turn an empty patch of desert, the side of a mountain, a thick intraversible forest, or even the bottom of the ocean into a fertile patch of land, replete with food, minerals, and crafting materials. There's still a lot of work to be done here, and many more problems to solve with my mining turtles, to make them more self-sufficient and more self-reliant. Maybe I'll post videos again if I can figure out how to do that. But until then, I hope this has inspired you to try something similar. I had a lot of fun with this, and I recommend you try it too. Thanks very much for watching.